we have found the response of an RC circuit or in general a first order circuit to an exponential input. Now, the solution we got was general except for one particular case when S C R plus 1 was equal to 0 that is in our usual notation meaning when the exciting exponential has the same time constant as the natural response of our first order system the solution we got was not defined because the denominator went off to 0. So, what we are going to do is to take the appropriate limit and see what comes out. Okay. V c, let us say we are looking for the response of V c. Now, this could be anything else, we could be looking for the response of uh, V r or the current through the loop. Okay. Now, we know that the response of a first order circuit of which this R C circuit is an example. This is Okay. This is the force response and this is the natural response. Okay. Now, when S equals minus 1 by C r, which means that the exciting source is V p exponential minus T by R c. That is, it is an exponential which is the same as the natural response of our circuit. We see that this denominator here goes to 0. So, we cannot use this expression as is. Okay. So, we will examine this further. So, we know that in general this constant here is determined from initial conditions. Okay. So, to do that what we have to do is let us say the initial voltage on the capacitor is V c of 0. Of course, we take 0 plus this will be equal to V p exponential s times 0 that is just 0 divided by 1 plus s c r plus V naught exponential minus 0 by r c. So, this is also 0. Okay. So, we know that this V naught this comes out to be by solving this we get V c of 0 plus minus V p by 1 plus s c r, okay, where this is the initial voltage on the capacitor. Okay. So, that is what this constant V naught has to be. So, if I use that to complete the expression here, okay, what will I get? V c of t equals I will have a V p by 1 plus a C r there and a V p by 1 plus a C r multiplying that one. So, V p by 1 plus a C r times exponential S t minus exponential minus t by R c okay, plus V c of 0 plus. Okay. So, again this is still 
undefined for S e r plus 1 equals 0. So, to overcome this difficulty what we will do is to take the limit of S e r plus 1 going towards 0. So, first of all let me define S e r plus 1 to be some delta. Okay. It just turns out to be easier to do it this way, you do not have to do it like this of course. Then this means that S is delta minus 1 divided by C r. Okay. So, this expression becomes V p divided by delta times exponential S t, which is uh, this delta minus 1 by C r. So, that will be exponential delta minus 1 by C r times t minus exponential minus t by r c plus v c of 0 plus and this can be rewritten as you observe that this is nothing but exponential delta t by r c times exponential minus t by r c. Okay. So, I will take this exponential minus t by r c which is common to this term and that term outside. So, I will have this whole thing to be equal to v p exponential minus t by r c okay. and I have exponential delta t by r c minus 1 divided by delta plus v c of 0 plus and I have to take the limit of this as delta tends to 0. When delta tends to 0, S e r plus 1 tends to 0 or S tends to minus 1 by C r. In this form, it turns out quite easy to do that. Okay. I am sure you are probably already familiar with this limit. You may have taken it in some other uh, basic class when you learnt about limits and so on, but I will do it here. So, one of the ways to do it is to expand this exponential in a power series. So, we get 1 plus delta t by r c plus delta square t square by 2 times r square c square plus higher order terms involving delta t cube, delta t to the 4 and so on. And finally, we have minus 1 coming from there. The whole thing is divided by delta. So, now this 1 just cancels off with this minus 1 and this delta here cancels with this. So, this term alone is left out without any deltas, whereas all the others will still have deltas. This delta square becomes delta, the next delta cube becomes delta square and so on. So, when you take the limit delta going to 0, so all these terms which had delta with a power more than 1 will go to 0, we will be left with only this t by r c. Okay. The limit as S e r plus 1 goes to 0 of V c of t, which is really V p by 1 plus S e r exponential S t minus exponential minus t by R c plus V c of 0 plus exponential minus t by R c. This whole thing will be equal to V p times t by R c exponential minus t by R c plus V c of 0 plus exponential minus t by R c. Okay. So, the total response equals V p times t by r c exponential minus t by r c plus V c of 0 plus exponential minus t by r c. Okay. This is the force response and this is the 
natural response okay so one thing you can observe is that the coefficient here of the force response is vp times t by rc okay remember the input was vp exponential minus t by rc and it gets multiplied by t by rc and if you observe this uh, multiplying factor or the gain so to speak of the forced uh, response this goes to infinity as t goes to infinity okay now this is a general feature that you will see that if you excite a system with its own natural response then it will have an infinite gain for that input right a system will have an infinite gain for its own natural response now this will be even more evident when we have uh, sinusoidal inputs and a circuit with a sinusoidal uh, natural response okay then you can see what is known as resonance now this is also a type of resonance but the point is here the total thing will not go to infinity although this multiplying factor goes to infinity this exponential falls off to zero much faster than this uh, t by rc goes up to infinity so the entire response still goes to zero okay so this phenomenon is of uh, resonance is not very evident here but the point is that the gain for the input when the input equals the natural response is very large as t goes to infinity the gain also goes to infinity okay now remember for uh, some other input when s was not equal to minus 1 by rc this gain instead of this it was 1 by 1 plus s cr okay now you can uh, if you just substitute s cr equal to minus 1 here you will get infinity uh, but you see that in the actual response you have t by rc and as uh, t goes to infinity this number also goes to infinity but the entire response goes to zero okay so in general the total response of a first order circuit to its own natural response is this which can also be written as vp times t by rc plus vc of 0 times exponential minus t by rc okay this is for a differential equation which is okay now you can also evaluate this for uh, other differential equations where different terms are scaled differently okay the important thing is here let's say the coefficient of vc is 1 then this coefficient is the time constant and the time constant of this exponential is exactly the same okay so when these two are the same okay when the time constant of the differential equation is the same as the time constant of the exponential on the right hand side you will get this solution now some other terms could be scaled instead of this vp you could get something else here and that will appear in this position okay now this is useful in itself to understand and also later when we discuss second order uh, systems a particular case of uh, second order systems reduces to this case where a first order system is being driven by an exponential which is equal to its natural response okay so this is quite an interesting result and uh, worthwhile remembering as well as
figuring out how to derive it from the other general expression. Okay.